I've been out in space for five days. Somebody, please help! Help! At least we have everybody now. Could we, like, shoot a distress signal and probably have someone pick us up? Maybe we could get that duck. We are a few light years away. Just a couple. No. Mm -hmm. Like, we went way out of our way to find food for our dying planet. Well, I shouldn't say it's the planet that's dying, it's the fact that we're overpopulated and we keep eating. Well, it's the people that are dying then, because they can't find any more food. Exactly. Alright, so after you save Charlie, all of a sudden we get a special signal. And I do enjoy how this game kind of slowly railroads you. I'm gonna put that in, like, just small, tiny, little, itty-bitty quote fingers. Because it's They're basically apostrophes. Yes. Uh, it, they do a good job of leading you in the correct direction on where to go to finish the plot. But, you don't have to do that if you want to go explore and find more fruit. Yeah, so this is our new objective. Cosmic Drive Key is the way to get home. We need to find Captain Olimar, who we presume has it. And there is no day limit, right? Correct. Probably. It's just, you're limited based on food. I'm gonna ask that every episode, I'm sure, but... No, it's alright. Cool. That to me says that, okay, here's the next thing to do if you want to further the plot, but if you want to keep going and get more food because you suck at this game and only have one bottle left, well then go right ahead. I will say the the time limit thing, they got rid of that in Pikmin 2 and probably good of them for it. And uh, Pikmin 4 is hilarious because you would think there would be a hard time limit because you're the rescue corps. You're being sent to save other people who crash landed on this on this weird planet. But I've had a, a playthrough go for like 40 days and everybody's just fine. <laughs> there is no dying of starvation in Nintendo games, except for this one! Oh yeah, this is where Alf landed. So we finally get to explore this in, uh, more in depth. Oh no, I already have tied this place to a very traumatic moment in my life where I almost died. I don't need to explore any further, that's fine. It's okay, Ch Captain Charlie, I know all about this place. Can we never come back, thank you. Alright, so you see that little blip? That's where we need to go. This is where we're hitting the signal. It's just telling me to go here, so I guess I have to go there? Yeah, let's go there. Or we can go here. We can go here, we can go there. I can go here. And because we've gotten so many fruit, all of the other fruits on an, in an area now actually show up on our radar. So we always have places where we can go. So this is a nice big stage. It's not too, uh, too overly complicated. So let's go! Let's go! That right there. I love that function. Where you can just select every color and get even amounts. Or as even as you can get with how many Pikmin you're going to get later. All up in that QOL. I know! Oh, hello. Oh, you're distressing. Yeah, don't like you. Get him. Got him. Yeah, that, th that thing is so creepy because its main form of attack is rushing forward, capturing what it can get, and if it takes it back to its burrow, it just dies. Well, I mean, it's going in the water. Of course it will die. I know, but it's even worse to see uh, blue Pikmin get drug back to the barrow and then immediately consumed. Well, maybe they're being brought in for a tea party or something like that. It's like, oh, we're finally here, and you can finally have some chamomile. Oh, it's not moving anymore. I'm Why does this always happen? <laughs> Why does this always happen? <laughs> exactly. All of my dinner guests keep dying. I'm never gonna be an underwater socialite at this rate. <laughs> he puts his top hat and monocle back on. He's like, and my my word, everybody keeps dying when they come to my tea party. Yeah. Ah, digging. We've already got a big group of Pikmin working on digging through a hole to find some cool stuff. Have the Pikmin do it. Yeah. Yeah, so you can have Pikmin dig shortcuts. You can have them dig in uh, dirt burrows, I guess. You can have them dig your scene. Hey, you Yo. Doing? You can have them dig your sweet vibe, Daddy-o. It's pretty great. 
dig these beats, you know? Yo, I can dig it. Al puts on a pair of sunglasses that go outside of his bubble, so they just kind of just fall on the floor. <laughs> Clink. Can you dig it? <laughs> yes, Alf, we can dig it. So this is an, another quality of life, but this is just for the Pikmin franchise in general. It's a fucking bomb! <laughs> Thankfully, we have a rock holding it. It'll be... wait. No. No, he'll... he'll it's die. a bomb with a rock! Bomb rocks used to only be able to be held by yellow Pikmin. Now any Pikmin can hold them. I, I still don't... Well, I mean, I can hazard a guess as to why only yellow Pikmin could hold them in the original game. It was because yellows didn't have anything else better to do. I mean, you, you gotta have them do something. I know! The red ones can go through fire, the blue ones can swim, and the yellow ones are... Well, they got ears and They the got mouth. ears, man! And the mouth, yeah. Alright, so a majority of whenever we come to a new area is just opening up the pathways. And uh, I, I gotta ask you, the, uh, the noob, when it comes to Pikmin. What do you think so far about Pikmin 3 as far as accessibility to new players? Do you notice how they're trying to, to bring in the new crowds? Um... Like well, I, know I, will, I will explain that with a story. Okay. About me and Monster Hunter. <laughs> I played Monster Hunter... Like, my first Monster Hunter game that I ever tried out was one for the PSP. I think it was Freedom Unite. God, I... I can't even remember how many... Isn't there like three Monster Hunter games for PSP? But r regardless. Yeah, so uh, Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. I, that was my first Monster Hunter game. How do you think I did on it? Not very well. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, it just didn't... I just couldn't figure it out. The second Monster Hunter game I played was Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. And uh, that was supposed to be the easiest one of the bunch and all that. This is supposed to be... Uh, it's uh, it's all, the, all these new accessibility options. But I still couldn't get into it. Hmm. It was still not enough for me. And then Monster Hunter World came out, but I just kind of passed that up because I learned my lesson. And then when Monster Hunter Rise came out, that thing sold five million copies in a month. And that, and it's like, f how, how in the world? That's in, that's insane. What? There, what is it with, with this series? There's got to be something about this game in particular. So I check it out, and that's the one I get into. That's the one that's the most streamlined, the most handholdy, the most accessible to newcomers. So I can see all of the. Uh, Newcomer friendly things that they're doing here, but hold, hold, they can streamline it more! They can definitely streamline it more, and it'll only take 10 years! You keep singing praises of Pikmin 4, and I still don't understand, because every time I hear Pikmin 4, I hear the words not Metroid Prime 4, and I, my, my eyes just glaze over and I don't care, so I don't know anything about Pikmin 4. <laughs> I know that's a dog! I know that you are in love with it, but. It stole the month of July from me. <laughs> well, <laughs> just how Tears of the Kingdom stole your May. Was it May? Yes. Yes. Okay. Also, I would just like to say, good job, Pikmin 4, on winning an award <laughs> from the Game Awards. Best strategy game, hell yeah! It's only because a Civ game wasn't released this year. <laughs> or, a, or a Total War game. You know, if Command and Conquer had an actual game attached to it, they would have they would have won. <laughs> I like how you prefaced an actual game. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Command and Conquer factions. It's a mobile game. Nope. And nope. <laughs> yeah. Free to play. Nope. Nope. Uh, speaking of mobile games, yeah, there is a Pikmin mobile game, and it is the most useless game <laughs> I think I've ever seen. Pikmin Bloom. It is a huge nothing burger. <laughs> A huge nothing burger? Yeah, well, I, I, I thought you were talking about Hey You Pikmin. Uh, no, that's the 3DS one, I think. No. Hey, Hey Pikmin. Hey Pikmin. Hey Pikmin! Now that one actually has gameplay. I uh, say, Hey Pikmin! Oh. Where you going with that gun in your hand? <laughs> Pikmin, no! <laughs> Don't all collectively pick up a gun, cock it back, and pull the trigger! I said, My captain's been cheating on me! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you steal my nectar? You steal my nectar? What? That's what I need, is for Louie to start braying Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> <laughs> I 
the, the Pikmin Blue, I, I played it while I was in Disney one year because it's a Niantic game, so they want you to to go and, you know, find stops or Pikmin stops or whatever they call them, giant flowers, I oh, guess, well, and get a bunch a, of nectar. There is an actual little Pikmin carrot by Mickey Mouse's feet. You can individually name every single Pikmin, which is what I did for a while, but then you get into the hundreds and it's just like, okay, well, no. Yeah, it gets like, I'm gonna name you Bob! I'm gonna name you Jameson! I'm gonna name you Keith! I'm gonna name you Steve! And then two weeks later, uh, it's Black Sock, blah, 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 as a diff. Yeah, just, just slam on the QWERTY keyboard. To random, 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 <laughs> fine. So here's what was making that signal. If we scavenge this, we can have a better scanning radius for the Drake and find a new area. So already unlocking a new area of the game. Uh, so let's just go ahead and toss this over here. G go get it, guys! A buried ancient relic of the past. It's funny. Oh, oh no! It's a Sarlacc! Oh, no, it's the sardine I buried last week. This thing is deadly. It's, uh, I think it's called like a mire slug or something like that. Basically what he'll do is he'll go around in the sand. Uh, there we go. Sand belching mirror, mirror slug. slug. Sand me. belching mirror slug. So yeah, it'll create giant sand pits. And there's just a giant maw there. So yeah, you weren't too far off from the Sarlacc comparison. It feels like a, like a, something you call someone, and they, and they go, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. You are sand-belching mere slug. <gasps> oh, sir! You got me! Yeah, so what you can do is, uh, you can attack it when it comes above ground, or you can throw bomb rocks down in the sand pit and blow it up. I don't even think it knows what it's doing, it's just kind of throwing rocks everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it's been belching up sand. K kinda. I mean, it doesn't actually kill your Pikmin when it throws the, uh, when it throws the sand. And when you uh. hit it enough, it just jumps out of the, out of the sand. Ouch! And then you can attack it! <laughs> it's so funny, and then somehow it just dives right in. Yeah, this, uh, this boss was actually a challenge in Pikmin 3, not so much here. Like, it's, it's gonna die pretty quickly. Why was it a challenge in the Wii U, but not the Switch version? There's been some uh, damage recalibrating, I think. Because, uh, I, I, I swear, bosses are going down stupid easy compared to when I first played them in, on the Wii U version. Maybe you got good. Uh, oh, maybe I did get good. You know, uh, you know what? Thank you. I did get See, good. It needs to be a compliment. People use get good wrong these days. Well, yeah, wasn't it originally pegged as just a way to insult gamers, sissy baby gamers who couldn't beat hard game. You see, you see, my way of, of get good, the way I thought it always meant is, you know, you can have all the strategies, you can have all the best items, you can have everything, you can, you can know everything, but at the end of the day, to defeat the boss, it comes down to your own personal skill. So you can have all the help you need, but in order to win, you have to get good. Mm -hmm. We gotta get good enough to overpower your foes. But now it's like whenever I have any kind of problem with the game, it's like, oh, just get good then! That, no, it's not, that's not what that means. So we just used an ultra spicy spray, which increased the Pikmin's power tenfold. Watch that health bar. Damn it. <laughs> okay, maybe it's it next certainly time. changed the color. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. I, I think I got stuck on a little bit of sand and my Pikmin couldn't come in here. So spicy you... as a jalapeno, buddy. Yeah, do you see this attack? And when you hear Alf, I've got a bad feeling about this. Uh, this is gonna sink the entire arena, isn't oh! it? Oh! Pretty close! Yep. No, oh, just, just throw it in there. There we go. So, yeah, the entire arena basically becomes one giant sand trap. And, to be fair... Oh, this one is also very destructive because it, it just creates walls. And that's what is what makes it harder to get out of. The only way to save your Pikmin is to, you know, toss a bomb in there. And that way he comes flying out of there. And we did it! I say that's impressive sand physics that they were probably proud of. <gasps> Little ferrets! Look at them! They're so cute! What evil creatures that they have displayed on here! Oh, they're so adorable! I don't know why they're... Oh, they're in a cage! 
No, it's uh, choose the p the pictures that has the ferret. Oh, it's one of those captures. <laughs> yeah, it's a capture. <laughs> capture on a flip phone. <laughs> All right, let's take back our spoils and take back the thing creating the signal. I don't know how only 20 Pikmin are needed to carry this big thing. But yeah, they're basically going to drag this giant mirror slug all the way back to the onion. And it's uh, watermelons? Yeah, it spit up a watermelon. That's not sand. I mean, would you want to have those watermelons? I mean, it's all in the sand. Ew. Well, I mean, it belches sand. It, it pukes watermelon. Sure. I mean, don't you, uh, what was it in Rugrats? If you eat watermelon seeds, you grow a watermelon? That was just an old wives' tale, honestly. Well, that's be well, I mean, the seed would not be able to germinate and grow within the, the, the digestive tract of a typical human. In but fact, a child doesn't know this. Matter of fact, most seeds uh, pass through the, uh, the digestive systems of most mammals, and uh, through defecation is how the seeds get planted, and that's how, indeed, they flourish. So, really, uh, seeds are, are biologically designed to withstand digestive tracts. There's no way the seed can grow in your stomach. Nerd! Thank you, I try hard. <laughs> Adjust glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Is this how we get shit coffee? No, not actual shit coffee, like coffee beans from shit. You've heard of those, right? What? Yeah, there are coffee beans that are passed through a digestive system, and it creates right. a more unique flavor. Is there shit still on the coffee bean when they grind it and make the coffee? God, I hope not. I hope they just don't call that flavor enhancer. Hmm. Don't want to think about that. Call it ass coffee. <laughs> this coffee tastes like mud. It is mud! You know, I made that quote and I have no idea where it's from. Several things, but Several things. Rugrats is what I'm getting it from. Okay. They, they use that twice. It is mud! I don't know why I have Rugrats on the brain. Good show. I didn't even watch the the revitalized version. Who did? Not a lot. I remember seeing one episode. It was at a restaurant. For some reason, they had it on. And I was looking at it, I was like, man, that looks like garbage. <laughs> it's CGI. One of the things that was so impressive about Rugrats was how good the animation was. All hand-drawn. It, it was all hand-drawn. It was so, like, lifelike. You didn't see a lot of cartoons like this with these, you know, you know uniquely shaped heads and these expressive, you know, body animations, that, body uh, movement that, that they did. Oh, it's a communication device. Folded data glutton. All 256 megabytes on that card, baby. Ooh. I could probably fit, like... Half of a 4K image on there. So I can probably fit the sickest ringtones on there. <laughs> I can make my own. I remember one time I racked up a really high phone bill accidentally. Are you playing games or? Yes. Five dollars to play this game. Oh. Okay. Shink. Five bucks. Thanks. Thanks. But I didn't realize that it was five dollars to play the game. Every time you open it. They charged you every time you open the game? I guess they did, because my dad that month was like, What's with this phone bill? Oh, And boy. I'm like, good question! Yeah, what is with this phone bill? I, I have no idea what happened, Dad. It was just weird that I it happened. No like, idea! I, no I, idea! I, I don't know what happened, man. Let's play the crappy God of War Flash game, I think. Then maybe, like, some other RPG or whatever. I don't know. Five dollars every time you open the game. I I doubt we're on the way there for the for the games industry. <laughs> Maybe somebody is that greedy. That's why I think you know consoles like the Switch are gonna stay around for like another ten years. I think. I I would be curious to see if Switch reaches that ten year anniversary. And I'm not saying like Switch family. I mean just the Switch. I don't think there's any real reason to upgrade. I mean, to have people spend even more money on another uh, another piece of hardware so we can make more expensive games that barely make any profit, when we can just keep this that everybody still has, everybody still uses, and you can just, you know, make a...
quick game that doesn't cost $100 million every time you want to make it and just make a quick profit. It's just, you just keep doing that. Well, it also seems a lot easier on devs to port games. Exactly. Like, we don't have too much left to port from the Wii U library. I think there's only, like, one that people really want. It's Xenoblade. And then after that, it's just like... I think it's just Xenoblade X, and that's it. Yep. Maybe you want to bring Game & Wario if you really care. I, you know what? I still haven't played Game & Wario. We did once. We tried the party mode. It sucked. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. Now, I will say, for, you know, for how easy it is to shit on the Wii U and it being just not that good of a console, uh, Nintendo Land was pitch perfect as a tech demo. I will 100% give it credit for that. But it wasn't Wii Sports. No. It didn't have the instant appeal. It was still interesting. Yeah, I think that's one of the worst things you can say about a game. Oh, it was interesting. That means you have nothing else to say about it. I mean, it, it uses the tech well, is what I'm getting at. Like, n obviously no other game could be like it, but it was just really cool to be like, Oh, this is how my, my gamepad works. And also, the Donkey Kong game is great. I would pop in Wii Sports just to play Wii Sports, just to do the boxing, the bowling, the golf, just to actually play the game, because it was fun to play. Nintendo Land? Huh. Neat. Never played again. That's the core difference. I'll also give Nintendo this. Them basically going, Huh, console for everybody? Huh. I bet we can get everybody to play this thing. We Would Like to Play was probably one of the most well-known commercials for a long time. Yeah, I think it, yeah. But, uh, yeah I uh, still have the song that played, too. It's, oh. it's the Yoshida Kyoda. It's yeah, a yeah, yeah. song called Kodo. Yeah, I never knew what it was called, but as soon as you mentioned, you remember what it sounds like. I started remembering what it sounded like. Yeah, Yoshida Brothers are great. Great song, great commercial. It, I, I think I've mentioned this before on video, but uh, I was recommended a compilation of 80s, 90s, and 2000s commercials. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, just seeing some of the old game commercials and how they uh, how they tried advertising, I think some of my favorites were when uh, were uh, Pokemon commercials because they would like hand draw in the different Pokemon into the commercial. And now that's exp that's too expensive for the marketing budget. Yeah, because uh, you remember the uh, the Pokemon Red and Blue commercial, right? Where they all get on the bus. Gotcha. Yep. Gotcha. Uh, but then they kind of redid it again with Ruby and Sapphire, but just not, you know, crunching them into a Game Boy Advance. It was, uh, people getting photos that looked like the Pokemon, uh -huh. so they would compare it. What's your Pokemon? Yeah, that was a great commercial! I was like, okay, yeah! Yeah, that's, that'll work! I remember there was a Metroid Zero Mission uh, commercial like that when they had that Who Are You uh, tagline. It's a, it's just a girl doing gymnastics. And she's like, yeah, doing crazy. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's like a, yeah. It's like crazy barrels. You know, jump right off the balance beam. Boom. Who are you? landing? Who, who are, are you? you? Samus fucking Aran. That's who. <laughs> yeah, that was a great commercial. See, I, I, I really enjoyed the, uh, the GameCube, uh, Game Boy Advance era for commercials for games in general. I had to look up the Dunk uh, the Duncan Country 2 uh, and 3 oh, yeah. commercials as well. That was fun. It's even tougher than the original. And DKC3 had, uh, you know, on the console that just that just keeps trucking. Super Nintendo. Because <laughs> it, it, yeah, it was like 96 around there. I saw the Super, Mar Super Mario RPG uh, trailer had that too. Like Super Mario oh, RPG, yeah, yeah, yeah. The console that just keeps trucking. Just, just, just won't stop. Was just that their forward. new ad campaign after that? Is, it just keeps on trucking? I, I think that's the way to to, keep, to hold people off until the N64 came out, because I had that some delays. Sense. PS PS1 was already out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sega Saturn's already kind of making waves. N64 is on the way. Super Nintendo's all we got for now. We still got good games, though. It keeps so, on trucking. So you get games like uh, Yoshi's Island and... Uh, yeah, y y Yoshi's Island, uh, Kirby's Dream Land 3, Mario RPG, you know, c c uh, games that kind of pushed the Super Nintendo as far as it could go. I'm trying to remember, what was the final Super Nintendo game? Uh, well, you could... I want to say it was uh, Kirby's Dream Land 3 in 1997. Dreamland 3 sounds right. 
I mean, the, the one that Nintendo officially made, I don't know if there was, like, a officially licensed one or whatever. Yeah, because I know 64 came out in 96, and there were just a couple more Super Nintendo games that came out after that. Last SNES game. I wonder how many opinion pieces are coming out without any research. <laughs> What's it say? Oh, hmm. The last game come on, come to on, be officially on. published on the physical cartridge was Fire Emblem Thracia 776 on January 21st, 2000. What? 2000? 2000. Four years after the N64 came out? But in North America, it was Kirby's Dream Land 3. Okay, in America, that... yeah. That works. The last game officially made by and Nintendo published during the system's lifespan was Metal Slider Glory Director's Cut on November 29th, 2000. Wow. Via the Nintendo Power uh, the Nintendo Power downloadable cartridge system. Oh geez, so we probably have lost that forever. How about that? Huh. That might have been like a saddle of you type thing anyway. Right, right. I wonder if anybody has a catalog of all those games. I'm sure you have archivists from back then. Yeah. All right, we got a huge haul. A pocked airhead. Yeah, pocked airhead. What'd you call me? I called you a pocked airhead, and you're gonna like it. What? Uh, hold on. That was a decapon. Is what that fruit was. So now I need to actually look up what a Decopon is. I'm sure it's a, some type of citrus. The Dapper Blob, that is a very sick looking blueberry, or a, maybe it could, could be a plum. Most likely a plum. So, Decopon is a seedless and sweet variety of Satsuma orange. It is a hybrid between Kiyomi and Ponkan. Oh. So, it's a Japanese orange that's like this kind of Japanese orange, which tastes like a cross between these two kinds of Japanese oranges. Correct. Right. I assume people could say the same thing about American, uh, like American apples. Like Red Delicious, Golden Delicious, uh, Macintosh, Granny Smith, Red Gala, Pink Lady, <laughs> Fuji. Oh, yeah. Take a look at that frame rate drop for all this liquid. Yeah! They're very proud of their liquid system. I know, it looks so good! They even put it on the, as the uh, filter for their text boxes. <laughs> they do. They're really proud of it. Let's just... Really gotta give them props. A little bit of a juice buffer. Brittany, we can be here for 25 more days. We won't even be here for half that time. Juice buffer. That's when I give them a glass of orange juice to tell them bad news. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Alright, so... We gotta talk about Grandma. Your mother and I. <laughs> Grandma has decided to um, ascend to the heavens and become a star god. So if you see Orion moving around erratically, you know that's her. Granny can fly? Yes, she can, and she can move the stars to her whim. Next time on Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Heading back down. Or actually, no, we need to see what this communication device does. Let's go to a new area. That's your call. <laughs> <laughs>